Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Tips to Top the Unofficial Bar. Uh, in this edition, I have a very special person with me. Uh, she is uh, Maureen Seniviratna, the first ever female President's Council in this country. She uh, became, uh, she came to the profession in, as far back in 1950s and she was the first female advocate in Sri Lanka and she became the first female president's council in 1983 and she was the first to have a master degree on law we commonly call LLM and she obtained from uh, uh, Yale Law School in USA so thank you madam for participating for this uh, interview and first uh, I would like to know from you before you become a lawyer uh, the early part of your life. I read that you were a grade A artist in Radio Silo and yeah. I also and also I uh, read that you are a good uh, pianist. Would you like to tell something about yourself before you become uh, a lawyer? Well, I had no intention whatsoever of becoming a lawyer. My first love was music and I did extremely well in it. I came first in all my exams, virtually every time, to be correct. And I got my associate of the Trinity College of Music London, licentiate of the Trinity College of Music London, FDCA of the Trinity College of London Music, and London, uh, licentiate of the Royal Schools of Music. I did all my diplomas whilst I was in school and study, so that it was really concentrating on my music more than my study. However, when I sat for the university entrance, I entered for law and I passed and I joined the law faculty. But by that time, I had misgivings about my career as a musician because those days the music teachers were paid very poorly, 15 rupees, 25 rupees, 50 rupees is considered a very big fee. But today they charge in the region of thousands. So that was the main reason, that I felt that financially I would be badly off. I wasn't a rich woman, a affluent woman, but my parents were very reasonably well off and they did so much for me, so that we didn't realize what hardship was. They, they would have made sacrifices to give us all the best. Now, once I entered the law faculty, I got through my exams. Then I got a first class in the advocate's final examination. And then I applied for a scholarship, Smith, uh, for Smith Mark Scholarship to the United States Educational Foundation. And I was fortunate to get it. And I chose Yale Law School. And there I got my master's degree. I must say that the happiest period of my studies was at Yale Law School. The professors were so friendly and so approachable. The students too, the, I was a foreigner, they became so friendly with me that even today, they communicate with me and visit me whenever they can. So that is the reason why I first took the law. Just my first love was music, piano, photo. And, and madam, you, uh, uh, neither your mother nor your father is a lawyer. No. And, um, and so, is, is there any particular reason or particular person who inspired you to select law? My parents were very keen that we should all go out for higher studies. And we all had a qualification and I had two, literally my two brothers were also lawyers. But I took the law because of, I realized, even as a child in school, I suffered lots of injustices and harassment from the principal at school, who was a woman from New Zealand. So I realized that, you know, it, was very, it would be very good to fight the injustices that take place. I was conscious of injustice even as a child. Now, under whom uh, you uh, spent your apprentice period at the the beginning of your career? Yes, I was very fortunate to be introduced to Mr. N. K. Choksi QC by Mr. H. C. D. Silva, Queen's Council. I'll always appreciate the fact that he put me on to Mr. Choksi. You see, I first initially was going to apprentice under Mr. H. C. D. Silva, who is a family friend. However, he became a commissioner of his and he put me on to Mr. Choksi, which is really the most fortunate thing that could have happened to me. Then. Thereafter, Mr. Choksi, and in fact, Mr. Choksi was so nice. 
he was known as the patron saint of the women lawyers because an earlier barrister too had worked with him. And he was, what struck me most was, in spite of his affluence, in spite of his eminence, great humility he had. And that is something that was instilled into us by him. You see, it takes so little for people to lose their bearings today. And Madam, those days, we are talking about four or five decades ago, only few uh, lady lawyers. There uh, were very few the women advocates. There were few women proctors, because then we had the distinction between advocates and proctors. Was there a particular reason why you select to, to become an advocate than a proctor? Well, it was much more prestigious and it was much more financially, it was much better because the proctors. I have, I have heard that you are a very strong woman, you have a very strong voice uh, or when you are on your feet in the court. Uh, did anyone particularly train you or were you inspired by particular counsels the way they... Well, as I told you, not, after Mr. Chopsi was the one who mainly helped me, but there was also Mr. D.S. Jagikrama, you see, who was a brilliant lawyer. Then there was Mr. C.V. Ranavaka. In fact, when he used to send me out station for cases, he used to write out the cross-examination for me. Then there was Mr. George Shitty and Mr. P. Navaratraja, George Shitty, D.S. Jagrana, and Mr. Choksi. I mentioned Mr. H. P. Pera, didn't I? So those were the people who really helped me. And they were the best lawyers, and I had that advantage. I'm sure uh, at that time, it must be uh, difficult for a lady lawyer uh, because nowadays, of course, we see majority of law students coming from the law college are female, and we see quite a huge number of uh, state councils working in the Attorney General's department, and uh, quite a increased number of lady judges we see uh, in the judiciary. Uh, when you enter the profession, it does not so. I was told at that time there was not a single female state council in the Attorney General Department. How did you see the situation at that time? How was the reception you had the from the society and from the bar? The reception, but for these good gentlemen whom I mentioned, Mr. Choksi, Mr. Navarat Raja, Mr. Chitti, Mr. Dia, I was really nervous to get into the law library because it was so unfriendly. And also, when I worked with people and I was getting on, I suffered quite a bit from character assassination, you see? And uh, that's something you can fight against because they get tired of it after some time. So that's my advice to women lawyers today, is to be cautious in their dealings, cautious in their be behavior, but they don't ha have to worry so much as I did. Uh, uh, now, madam, still, despite the fact that we have so many lady lawyers, we see only few lady councils in the appellate courts, particularly. Uh, do you see? Uh, do you? Can you tell particular reason why? Because more majority of the lady lawyers, I must say, they either go to different institutions as legal officers or to the judiciary, but only few uh, in the private bar. Uh, rising as councils, uh, particularly in appellate courts? No, I would not agree with you there. There are quite a few women lawyers who are doing well at the bar and uh, who address court and they're quite competent. And also remember that today even the district judges are women. So most of the women prefer to get into a legal job, you see, like legal advice or judiciary. So many of them are women. Yeah. Even, even so, in the recent past, we, we saw that. I mean, we but had, not in the past. Not in the past. We had a, Why we had a Chief Justice. Then we had an Acting Chief Justice, Eva Manasundara. We had an Attorney General. Attorney General. First of all. And we had a first... And now today we have a Solicitor General, a Muslim lady. Oh. You see? Yeah. Uh, Madam, uh, uh, in your decades long career in the bar, particularly as a counsel, you must be having thousands of experience, especially some of the incidents, unfor unforgettable memories, from which others can learn. Would you like to share some of those experiences well, from which law students uh, and uh, young lawyers can learn? Sir? Well, I would say first and foremost that one has to be very hardworking. 
it's a demanding job. And that's why lots of women prepare to do, get into firms and work a very little time. And as you said, as I told you, it's very hard work. It's demanding. Because I would like to tell you that uh, it's not as uh, a demanding as say, music. Because music you have to continuously practice every day. But in the case of law, you can study your briefs at the end of night. Because you see, I remember uh, there's a great musician and composer by the name of Pedrowski. And he stated one day at an interview that the first day he doesn't practice, it's God who knows. The second day he knows that he hasn't practiced. The third day the public knows that he hasn't practiced. So you see, in a way it is much more advantageous for me to take the law from that point of view. But it's a very demanding job if you have to do it. And you have to be conscientious, you see. And I, in my work, I did quite a lot of divorce work, which I found very depressing at times. And my more, greatest ambition was, when I did a divorce case, was to see that the parties reconciled, where there are children. So I remember one or two cases when I was persuading a woman who had gone through quite a trial with her husband to this, be friendly, get friendly with her husband and get back to him. She replied, Madam, you are not married, so you don't know what a married woman has to go through. So with that, I stopped trying to reconcile people. Then on another day, on another condition, I was against Mr. P. Navaratraja in a divorce case. And we were fighting bitterly. Then he, we were very good friends and he was very helpful to me. I worked with him. He turned around and told the judge, with all, what does my friend know about marriage? She is not married. Then I replied and I told the judge, Sir, it's only fools like my learned friend who learn from their own experience. But I learn from the experience of fools and I pointed out him. <laughs> well, uh, wise men learn from the experience of fools, I said. So you see, we had a lot of humor and goodwill. There was nothing malicious in it. And they were all very good friends. There was a lot of cordiality at the bar. And I must say this, when I had problems, especially a case where my brother was after death indicted, and we were very upset about it because he was a man with impeccable reputation. Practically 90% of the bar backed me, and we cleared his name, and the Attorney General had to withdraw the indictment, you see. So that was the spirit of the bar, even today I would say, that there's a certain amount of sincerity, friendship at the bar. And I benefited a lot, and I must say I'm grateful to those who helped me. For instance, Mr. R.K. W. Gunasekhar, Mr. Choksi, Chiti, all those people. They were so nice to me. And Mr. R.K. W. Gunasekhar, I wasn't keen on pursuing my brother's case, because he was dead. He died as a result. And he came home personally and said, don't keep quiet. I will do it. And he helped me so much. And we won the case. I mean, he did. You see, so that was the spirit of the bar. Madam, your example for all the lady lawyers, uh, not only for the lady lawyers, all the lawyers, particularly to the lady lawyers who are thinking to become a counsel uh, and stand in the court uh, and uh, doing arguments and doing cross-examination. And um, as we already know that uh, increasing number of uh, female students uh, uh, coming in the law stream, uh, they, they, uh, they becoming lawyers, uh, 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 what, are, what are your advices you can give to the young lawyers and law students who are coming to this profession? You see, I wouldn't dare to advise the males, because they have plenty of people to back them. But I have helped quite a few females to get on, and you see, most of them prefer to take to jobs. The few who have taken seriously to the law have done very well. You see Eva Banasundra, then there's another lady, I can't remember her name. Quite a few women who have taken to the law series, they have done quite well. But they have mostly taken to judicial appointments, but very rarely to the private practice. So do you encourage uh, the young lady lawyers or the, the female law students to uh, come to the private practice, particularly to uh, be counsels? Uh? Yes, but ju they do just as well in the judiciary. They do just as well in the legal drama because they have pe top people in those places so that we don't know what their financial positions are. Then when they marry, they have the financial circumstances become even more burdensome. So I suppose these are more secure, there's more security, there's less security in private practice. Because yeah. when you start, 
unless you have your parents to support you, it's going to be very difficult. And now there are a lot of, I would say, unfortunately, there are false values. People think they must start off with a swanky car. How did you start, madam? Because it will be a good uh, example for now, others to... shall I tell you? There were three lawyers in our family. My father was a government servant, he was an accountant in the railway, but you know the salaries they got. But they gave the best to their children. They made a lot of sacrifices. So my advice to any lawyer, and what did they tell us? You know, we had a family car. They said, we are going to get you one car. The three of you will have to share one car, which is going to be rather difficult. Not individual cars. And they bought us a small A30. And anyway, without much bickering, we were able to organize our work. So that my main advice to the lawyers is not to have a false sense of values. Don't try to start with seniors in. You see, the seniors come in swanky cars. Because it's going to be a hassle. You eventually end up being dishonest. So my main advice is to be humble, to manage with what you get, and work hard. And that's about the best advice, because you have to work very hard. Yeah, and, and the beginning of your career, you uh, accepted, you were ready to accept any case that comes to you? Of course, not on it. I would say that to any lawyer, you can't pick and choose. You can do that when you're an eminent lawyer. But whatever work came my way, I would accept it. And sometimes I remember when I started work, I charged a minimum fee of five guineas. That's about 50, 50 or rupees. But of course, I had the support and encouragement of my parents, to whom I'd be ever grateful. And they had three lawyers to support, not one. So, uh Thank you very much, madam. Uh, with this, we will conclude uh, this interview. It's a pleasure to have you in this interview. Uh, we consider you are a living legend. Uh, you have pioneered in many ways in this uh, legal profession. And, uh, and thank you very much for uh, participating in this interview. Thank you. Thank you for the interview.